All right, last part of the deal here. I was just going to skip this stuff and get right to the thing, but you know, there's always something that's helpful to somebody. And apologize for putting those of you through this that are well aware of it. Just put your cap back on and tighten it down your torque screws, and and then we'll get to filling filling it back up with some uh, fluid here. Again, I think I mentioned earlier. The owner's manual recommends one of two things. Either the Polaris, um, you know, specialty oil, which is considerably more expensive than just picking up a quart of uh, ATF or automatic transmission fluid, which is what I opted to use because I also happen to have some laying around here. And that's why you might have seen the pink in the pan below there or on some of the towels I had laying around. So there's a torque for this as well, but I think uh, you can kind of go with your gut on this and know when it's tight. There is an O-ring on there as well that was all cleaned off real good. Then what you want to do is take out this Allen screw. Just you know, it's on one side here. I'm just going to spin that out, and then I'll take some automatic transmission fluid. I like to just pour some in a cup, and I happen to work in healthcare also, so. I have access to old expired things like syringes. When they expire, I'm going to throw them away, so I'll grab a couple if I can. And uh, I found that this takes about 30 ml or 30 cc interchangeable, same thing, I believe, um, of the fluid. And I just kind of, you don't want to create a seal on there as you put it in, but you don't have to do it this way. You can pour it in if you want to get all over the place. I just find this to be much more much less messy. You don't want to create a seal by pressing that into the hole and squirting it in there hard because if you do you can then have it blow out the back of your seals if you create too much pressure. I think it would take quite a bit to do that but it was something that they mentioned in the owner's manual so I thought I'd pass that on. So I found about three of these. These are 10 cc syringes, 10 ml, and I found that three of them is about right and put a little bit more in. There's probably some residual in there from before. What you're supposed to do if you do it by the, uh, the book is they say to have a bottle with a, you know, a pointed introducer or pointed uh, tip on it and you're supposed to fill it having this turn to either 4 o'clock or 8 o'clock your preference left or right, 4 o'clock being to the right and you fill it till it just about dribbles and I make it so these two bolts are kind of parallel and that puts it at, yeah, it's probably not quite four o'clock. And if you don't see any leaking out yet, you need more. Um, and I probably don't need very much more. So we'll give it a, another, maybe half of one of these, so it'd be about 35. Let's see where we're at. And I just kind of wipe it off so I can tell when it's really leaking out. I'll see if I can demonstrate that for you. So again, still probably not quite full enough, but right there, it starts leaking. So that's probably pretty darn good, and I'll kind of give this a... You know, you got to also take into consideration that some of that's going to work towards the back bearings and, and through all the, all the parts in there and lube everything up real good. And I can't say I've ever used automatic transmission fluid by prescription as a lubricant and any parts other than in the transmission, but I'm sure a lot of you guys out there can come up with all kinds of things. Again, I'm, I'm not an expert. I, I just, I, I feel comfortable with this. I've done, dug into this front end a few times now. I can take it apart pretty efficiently and back together and understand some of the things that might trip you up because some of them tripped me up. And I was unable to find a video for this, thought I would make one. And here we are, so I know I'm babbling a lot about a lot of stuff, and, but hopefully this is helpful. So there you go, that's that's pretty darn good. You know, and then put your, uh, put your plug back in here, just an Allen screw. And cross thread it, like it looks like I might be doing there. Pretty sure not, yeah, we're good. Okay, then you're just gonna put your tire back on and tighten it down if you, if you're so inclined to factory specifications and all that, but this should do it. I think I got everything good. Everything's torqued tight. 
A-arms back on, cotter pins back in, steering arms back on, brakes back on, torqued all those to factory specs of course. Um, did all that, you know, off video in between cleaning up and, and uh, getting ready to show you this part. Figured you didn't need to see all those details. Um, if there's some specific details that, that I did not cover and I might be able to have in the book or answer because I just skipped it flying through this. Again, this is my part two of my first video ever, so, you know, bear with me. I apologize if it's not not the best one you ever watched, but hopefully it was informative if nothing else. A um, couple of things I'm just trying to think of to cover real quick before I sign off here is uh, one thing, I, a little thing, probably small nugget, but when I jacked it up, I had a block of wood under there and I had it just a little bit under the A-arm, so when I wanted to take the A-arm off, it wasn't the smoothest, silkiest thing, so make sure you got clearance there. I was trying, instead of just putting it in the center um, and jacking the whole front end up, I was trying to offset it on this side to try to jack up just this side. It didn't really necessarily achieve that, so that was kind of pointless. I figured it would help me with less spill and leaking with everything tilted that way. You know, tilted towards the back and I pulled this off and anyways, overthought that. Um, let's see what else here. You know, uh, another thing I did on this front end that uh, maybe of some use is it replaced this drive shaft. You got your, you got your CV boot shaft and then up top here two U-joints. Um, I had to replace a CV boot on the other side and Polaris, I live in Alaska by the way, Polaris wanted $44 at one dealer and $36 at the other. I found some on Amazon for $10 and they were fantastic. Bought two of them right away. Um, $44. <laughs> I got this whole CV joint, here, the axle, CV joint, CV boot, shaft, and two U-joints as an assembly ready to go just to put on for $69.99 from a place out of Florida. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but if somebody's interested, I'd be happy to look that up and respond to your, to your uh, email or your, your uh, comment. Um, and if you did, needed to replace this, you could just watch the other video. I didn't video that. I wasn't inspired to at that point, I guess. But after doing so many, tearing this thing apart a few times, I thought, you know what? I, it would really be nice if there's something on there. And I'm sure someone out there would appreciate it. So why not videotape it? So in addition to taking the hub and everything off like we did in another video, it, the, the only other thing you have to do is knock a cotter pin or a roll pin out of here. And it's in there good. Um depending on how and who put it in last time the one that i had in there was sticking out on both sides and flared on both sides and there's not a lot of swing room in there so it was really hard it just took persistence and a punch and just kept at it um i would suggest some people have replaced it with a bolt but i would suggest if you were to do it yourself when putting that pin back in don't make it stick out the other side. Have it just recessed a little bit so you know it's where it's supposed to be. But if you ever got to take it out again, it's recessed a little and you can whale it out of there with much less headache. Um, so other than that, I think that's about it. I'm going to put my uh, my cosmetic uh, plastic plate back on here, my tire back on, and, and call it good. And hopefully uh, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. And, and uh, any comments are appreciated. Again, this is my first effort, so be kind. <laughs> And maybe I'll see you again. Thanks.